Hi everybody, welcome to Woodworking Wisdom. My name is Colin Way, and um, today we, we're we're still staying with a sort of a Christmassy theme. This is more what to do over the Christmas time, um, maybe after your Christmas dinner at the dinner table, those sorts of things. And if you're watching this after Christmas, to be honest, after your Sunday roast whenever you want to, when you've got family around. It's a great little game. And it's table skittles. Um, in the southwest of, of the UK here, we have um, pub leagues in many different types of, of, of game. Um, and table skittles is one of them. Um, and it's great fun. It doesn't take up huge amounts of room. But for a wood turner, it's a brilliant little thing to make. Um, I have made a very small um, tabletop version but you can make them obviously much bigger with um, with a table that's bigger with boundaries on it so it collects the, the skills as they get knocked over and all those sorts of things. Um, so I just thought I'd share this one with you because it's great, like I say, it's great when you've got the family over. Um, me and Ben had a, a bit of a tournament before we went live um, and it just so turns out that Ben's a natural so I shan't be playing it again um, with Ben. But no, um, it's, a, it's a great fun thing. It's a nine-pin um a bowling alley on this one i've done them sort of traditional uh skittle pin shape um, and we're going to have a look at everything uh in a minute a bit more closer detail but we've got ben on questions today don't forget if you uh have any questions use ben as your conduit uh to me and uh, he'll ask the questions and uh, and we'll go from there um if marie is in they're very pen pe penguin-esque shape these skills so yeah i'll let your imagination and the conversation do the rest of the work with you lot because i know what you like um but let's have a look at closer at the board and what we've got here we're going to work from the ground up like we do everything um in woodworking wisdom start from the stable bottom up um and i'm going to talk to you about the base now you can use solid timber if you want to but i always think with the solid bits of timber it's like making a wooden bowl or anything like that you're always going to get movement in solid timber so this is a bit of countertop um, and I'll get uh, another, um, the, the one I'm working on at the moment out to show you more in more detail in a minute. But it's basically laminated timber. You can do that yourself. Of course you can. Just glue bits together and then plane up. But I started off with a bit of countertop. Is this easier for me? The project um, took me um, the morning yesterday. So it is a, a slightly longer project than ones that we've been used to. Hence the reason that I'm doing this in, in two stages, ones that I've already got done. And then we'll, we'll look at the one that I'm making. Um, I'm not going to make all nine pins though. We are just going to show you one. I might do two just so we can copy one um, and then move on. But we've got the, the base. Let me just, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a go and we're going to knock a few pins down and then we'll show you what's underneath those pins. So just before we get started with the, with the explanation. So there's my, my wrecking ball down here. This is a lovely piece of ash. Um, the chain is, I went down to the local um, farm supplies yesterday and this is literally just um, a, a, a sink plug chain. 18 inch plug chain is what I look for. I did have to cut a little bit off. Um, just to match the length of pole that I've got here, um, which is 18 inches. Um, but yeah, that's all that is. So nice, simple uh, to buy. It cost me £2.50. It's not an expensive thing. Um, and then it's just your timber after that. I finish all of this with finishing oil as well. Um, so there we are, that swings. Now, the rules in, in the pub game anyway is that you throw in a clockwise position from behind the um, the pole. Um, and the idea is if you've got a, you have one throw, and then your opponent has their throw. It's notoriously difficult to get all nine down. You wouldn't think that, but um, in this case it is. And I'll give you the measurements as we go for each component, including the distance between centers um, of each of those holes. But you throw from behind in a clockwise position, and you're supposed to hit them all down. So here we go. And yeah, five seems to be a standard with me, I'm afraid. Um, there we are. So underneath those, we got our pin positions or our, our skittle positions. Um, so we need to create those as well. And we're going to, this is our first bit of turning. We're going to turn the little pins to see in the holes that I've done. So let's get that out of the way just for the minute. I'll leave the ones on the floor on the floor as long as I'm not going to trip over any of them. And we need, we'll need to get those back in a second. So pin positions, we need to put those in. The base itself, we then got an upright here. This is done from, I'm using uh, two inch uh, ash for this um, for this piece and it's 18 inches long in total. And then the little wrecking ball, again, another piece of ash there. Um, and I don't know whether I can get the camera to see this, but in the end, you can just see 
um, the end of the plug going straight in with us just a screw there and it really is free it moves really nicely so that's worked really quite well I'm just going to shove that on the bench the other side let me grab the other board so you can see the preparation I've done here so which is the best one there Ben is that overhead better for you whichever whichever you want um, so what I've done um, to mark this out and let me get some measurements all ready for you so i've got this piece of board i've got it's just over nine and a half inches and we're going 13 inches uh, in length here um I'm, unfortunately i'm going to have to mix up uh, metric and imperial because i've used metric to make this um so that converts to 24 centimeters wide by ooh, by 34 long now, in terms of my hole spacing, the center points between the hole, I've got seven and a half centimeters ish, so two and three quarters ish. Okay, that just seemed to work out well for the size of the pins that I'm putting on here. Um, and those pins have started off with a, a blank length of three and three quarter inches or nine and a half centimeters. Okay. Um, and then width, so inch and a quarter, 33 mil. Okay, so there's our dimensions for the pins. Finished dimensions was wasn't a much wasn't much less because I didn't take much off. So I'm about three and five eighths finished in terms of lengths. All right. So there we are. So that's those dimensions. Um, and the way I've done this is literally I found center. I've scribed the center line all the way up through. I've measured down from that one end on this particular piece. Um, 120, so 12 centimeters from the short end here, and then I've dropped my straight line. So I've got one line going up through the center, then that line, and then it's quite easy then to divide your diamond up um, and then into three again. Okay, so fairly simple. I've you then used a 10 millimeter or 3 8 um, lip and spur or brow point bit to do the holes here. Okay, and then on this one, I can't remember what I used 20 mil there, so 20 mil, so three three quarters, um, and I've used a, um, a force and a bit to create that hole. That's for the tenon for the pole, the upright there, okay? So that's my preparation. It's had a rough sanding because it's going to have to be sanded again once I've put the little pins to um, to show the, the spots, the little spot pins. Um, and so that's, a, I think that was around about 120. And then once I've got those in and they're glued, I can sand that down nice and fine. I sand the edges just to... Just to soften these edges a little bit. You can route them, of course, if you want to. Um, ben, sorry, we have a first question there. Yes. So, <clears throat> afternoon, everyone. Um, we've got a few questions. There's lots of talks about penguins or Santas being the pins, <laughs> and uh, Maria says that's fine. Of course, <laughs> so there Maria's is. <laughs> um, but, yeah, lots of chat about, um, about different styles of pins that you could do. We've got a few questions here. One, uh, first one, Cohen, is the um, someone looking to buy uh, a wave cutters. Um, now they're asking if the fish ones are the only ones that we do. I know we we we've got Forstner bits that are uh, made by Axminster, um, the eco ones. Yeah, but I'm not sure about the wave. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to, well, I'd have to research that to know 110%. Um, so whoever's asking the question, email us in and we'll we'll get the answer to back to you tomorrow um, or this afternoon. Um, I'm not sure off the top of my head, if I'm honest. No, sure. Yeah. Um, and then we've got, um, we've got, hey, Colwyn, Andy Carr here. Um, when are you coming to SWAT? Well, I can't say. I'm not allowed to say. I'm sworn to secrecy at the moment. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Going on the spot. I can't okay, say. Sorry, I in. can't say. If I um, put my foot in it, I would say in the next couple of years. I would have thought. I'd hope to. I'd hope to be there in the next couple of years. Maybe in the next. Probably in the next couple of months, I'll be able to tell you something. Um, Soon as I know for one hundred percent, then I'll let you know. All right. Okay. <laughs> and then Fuller's asking um, an off-topic question. Um, some years ago, he made a nightlight from a block of beautiful blue and white swirly resin. It is now greenish. Um, it wasn't exposed to direct sunlight. Do you know what gives? 
So no. The colors change slightly colors on, change. on the resin. Uh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, you when you buy resin, a lot of them will boast non-yellowing. So whether it's that now, um, resin, um, old school resin will yellow. Um, but casting resin is not supposed to. So it may be that, that you know it started to yellow a little bit, and of course, yellow and blue makes green. So it's it's a natural natural assumption that that's that's the color it's going to go. So I would have guessed that will be it. Yeah. All right. Right. Skills. No. Sk yes. Well, we start with skills. I said that we we're going to start with the little center points, but now I've just set up for us to, to turn a skill. So we'll do skills first, then we'll do the little marker pins to go into the hole on the base. Um, before we go any further so here we go now we are a little bit out of center because i want to get also the the center pole in in a minute as well so i didn't want to keep moving the cameras around so um bear with us on that one but this is a fairly simple form but you're going to be doing several of them so set yourself up a little template would be my advice here i'm going to start off by just roughing down with a roughing gouge and we're, look we're using ring centers the ring centers are there for a reason um, they're small, they're out of my way. If I was using a pro driver or a four-prong driver or anything like that, then they'd be cumbersome. They'd be in the way. Um, and as is, I need a small amount of um, material in the way as possible. So down to a cylinder. All right, so down to a rough cylinder. Then what I'm going to do, I've got two calipers set up and a set of dividers. So my two calipers, the calipers I've got here, one is for the, the, the overall body thickness, so the biggest section, and then this is for the top of the, uh, the little skill, that thickness there. And then also I've got the overall length set up with a set of dividers here. So really, really important. We want to make sure they're all the same. Um, my new pub skittles, it can be deemed as... Um, you know, it doesn't matter because people that play in pub skittles or bar skittles um, aren't going to worry too much, especially after a couple of L's anyway. However, that's not true. You, if you've ever played in a league game of anything, whether it's bar skittles, table skittles, whether it's, it's um, alley skittles or anything like that, it's a deadly serious, um, serious competition. So you've got to, got to make sure all of these are dead right. So I'm going to make sure we have our dimensions right each time. So... maximum diameter and then we can set the head diameter once you've done that we can then carry on with the roughing down Um, I'm going to mark my overall length. And then, again, with a parting tool, we're just going to take away... Let's go with a thinner parting tool than that one, so one eighth. This is our waste areas, which we'll sand away later. So get rid of all that rubbish. Now then, I've got a little template cut here, and the best word of, of advice, if you're unsure on shape... So there's my template... It has two measurements marked on it. Well, not measurements as such, but positions marked on it. These are the high points. I hope you can see those. It's two pencil marks, that's all. These are the high spots. So I'm going to mark one high spot and the other high spot. That helps me keep the curves the same. So now I know where the high spot of the top ball is and the same with the bottom. The way I've done this is I've made my pin, got the shape that I want, cut it in half and then draw my template. Okay, so quite a simple way. I did sacrifice one pin, but it's uh, rather that way than, than not quite being sure. So let's go with, we got a choice now of either a bowl gouge or a spindle gouge. So whichever tool you want to, to use. And we're gonna do our shaping, working away from those, those high spots. You can use a skew chisel. Whatever you want. So just doing the bulk of the shaping before refining. This 
There's a little one, a little quarter inch bowl gouge. There we are. Oh, a bit of a flat in the bottom of that curve. We don't want that. There we are. So there we are. There's the basic skittle shape. Let's just, I'm going to use the parting tool just to bring that top edge around a little bit. And that'll be sanded away in a moment. So we're good to go there. So tool rest can come away. Well, I'll give it a bit of a sand. So I'm going to go 150, 240, 400. Dust extractor's going on. So you're going to be making nine of these. I probably, if I'm honest with you, especially if you're going to give them to somebody, or give the set to somebody, make a spare, just in case one gets lost. Dog eats it. Anything like that. There we are. That's the rough roughing down with a 150, so I'll go 240. You go. You could throw in a 180 if you wanted to. Ash is fairly friendly to us, though. You can put some lines in, some decoration in any part of those high spots if you wish. Um, I'm looking for a 400 grit next, or even a 320, whichever, whichever you have. Yeah, I'm going to oil these. I might have told you already, but you don't have to. You can you can lacquer them, you can varnish them, you can put wax on them, do whatever you want. But I'm going to oil them. So I have my oil brush. Oh, that was a dry oil brush. Here's my oil brush. A little bit more oil here. I mean, you could just go straight in with a tissue if you want to. A bit of rag, polished rag, that sort of thing. It's nice and easy with a brush. Put on, wipe off the excess, always wipe off the excess. Oil is one of those finishes, like friction polish, if you don't wipe off the excess, it'll go sticky. A little bit of burnishing, just to get that sort of drying a little bit. What I would like to do with this, get all nine done, and as they're, as you're making the nine, they, they, the oil starts to dry, so it make it nice and easy for sanding later. There we are. One partly done skill. I'll bring that up to the camera. Okay, so one partly done skill. Nice, nice this ash. It's got some lovely sort of grain markings to it, and there's a little bit of olive in some of it as well. So all I have to do with this is just trim off the top and the bottom. Okay. So we'll do that next, and then we'll start looking at those little plugs for the actual board itself. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick my neck out a little bit and say, I, I would probably say that this is a fairly straightforward project, it, it, you know, and a fairly easy one to turn. Again, like many projects that we do here, there's just a lot of components to them. So as long as you've got that A to B journey, the turning itself is. is Fairly straightforward, you know, um, just just time consuming more than anything. So we can get rid of our measuring devices now. The calipers can disappear. We're going to pretend we've turned all nine. And our next job, of course, is to cleaning up those waste ends of the skittles. So I'm going to use. See jaws, and we're going to go back with our sanding disc. So just my little sanding disc on the on the faceplate ring. There we are, and we will. This is a. Oh, what grit is this? Let's have a look a minute. I can't remember. It's like a one. It's an eighty grit on here. So this is going to rough out the worst of the waste wood. Um, now, I've abused this a little bit. It's starting to clog up, so I do get a little bit burning. So what I'm having to do is just keep it moving around the, 
the disc. I knew I need to change the disc a little bit. But look, when you do this, especially on any um, round surface, keep that rotating. Don't just keep dabbing. Otherwise, you'll have facets on there. Just keep rotating, rotating, rotating. Remember, the center of the sanding disc is moving slower. So it will give you a slower cut. So if you're things, if finding things are getting away from you and being sanded away really quickly, go to the center. That's enough. I don't want to go below the natural curve of that little shape at the top. But that's enough there. So now we can start thinking about the bottom. And we don't want drunk skittles. They need to stand up. They need to be square with each other. So I'm just taking lots of little, little bites of this. And again here, hold low down. If you start holding this up here and trying to do this, it, it'll grab you. So hold low down here and make sure that's nice and flat so he can stand up. And he does. So that means I can take the big disc away. And I can go with my little bowl sanding pad, which I've got at the moment loaded with a 180. And that's only going to be used on this top section here, on this, this area. Okay. And we're just going to again carry on that rotation. Good. Now, take that one off. I'm going to go with a 400. Have a little bit of oil. Wipe off, wipe off the excess. And then he's on and ready for the next one. Right, so a nice little skill made there, ready for our table. Yes, Ben, more questions. Um, so a question here from Cliff. He's asking about the um, the measurements on the uh, the calipers. Sorry, yeah, two caliper measurements, please. Two sets. So large caliper. I've got set here to thirty three millimeters. Or an imperial, oh, just over inch and a quarter. Small caliper is set to twenty mil, twenty mil. So that's about three quarters. All right. And then we've got Martin in. He said he's made a set for his local um, tap brewery, or it's brewery tap room. Ah oh, no, nope. he's made a set. Wise man, keep him happy. <laughs> There we are. So I've just put the small O'Donnell jaws in. Now, what I've got here for the, the little holes, sorry, not the little holes, the markers for your um, for the skill positions, I've just got some olive ash, but you can use something that's really dark. You can use some walnut or some exotics, whichever you want to do. Um, and I've just cut this down to, this is around about 12, about 11, 12 mil, um, so nearly half inch, just so I can then um, turn down to the 10 mil that I needed or three eighths that I need. I'm going to hold it in the O'Donnell's, and basically, I mean, yesterday I turned the whole batch in one, all the nine individual pins in one cylinder by bringing the tail stock up, holding a long length between and turning all of it down to the same diameter. I'm just going to do a couple for you here um, just to make it a bit easier. You don't have to do the whole length at once. The grain also on this piece of timber is all over the place. It's not running true. You look, if you look at it, you can see what's happening as it, as it comes around. It really is... Um, sort of all over the place. Um, shouldn't make a difference to us because I'm going to turn fairly speedy. So over the 2,000, 2,3. Two, there we are. And obviously there's only one tool that will do this. 
Nice little signature skew. Push pull cut. Okay. Now, before I get um, carried away, I need to again take a set of calipers. And we're going to measure the drill bit that I used to cut the holes in the base. Okay. And then with a parting tool, you can go conventional parting tool. Beading and parting tool makes a difference. And then you want to take that, that excess away. Do it with any tool you want to. You don't have to do it with a skew. You can do it with a bowl gouge, a roughing gouge, spindle gouge, um, scraper. Doesn't matter. Malcolm's asking, could you use a plug cutter, Colwell? Yeah, no, absolutely. There we are. Right, I'm going to clean that end up only because I want to, not for any practical reason, because we're going to sand it back in a minute. Um, and, yeah, let's just, just to make sure we'll give a little bit of a sound there. Done. Now... The other thing which I've done, just rather than, because I want these to be, I don't want to have to sand away a lot, um, you know, of, of these pegs. I, don't want, I only want to make as many as I need to. So I'm just going to use a depth gauge. Okay, so that down to the bottom of that hole. That gives me the depth of the hole. Then you can mark that. And you can then, once you've got a, an idea, I'm going to come just a slightly bit longer than that, uh, than the depth. We're going to cut a couple of those. Um, I'm going to go straight in with the, the saw, a little pull saw. One, make the mark. Oh, there's three. And then you would have glue. So I tend to go with a PVA glue on these because it's a little bit slower setting. There we are. little bit of PVA glue on there, of course, before you put them in. Then you can wait for that to dry. And then once you've got all three in and they're dry, you can then sand back and we can start thinking about a finishing grade of abrasive on those. That also sands out your pencil marks and gets everything looking really, really nice. Um, and again, on the, the base, I've oiled the base um, on the finished one. And that really brings out the color in those little plugs. It really makes them jump out a little bit. So certainly recommend doing that. So fairly simple process there. Just measuring so we don't come too proud, so I don't have to do too much work. Again, if you want to just pair them off with a little um, a little um, gout, uh, carving chisel uh, or carpentry chisel, then you could do that. Just be very careful not to chip anything out when you do that. So tiny little pairing cuts as opposed to hammering something away. Okay. All right, yes, Ben, another, another question. Yeah, I've got a great question from Maria here. Is um, Type Bond type bond 3, is it BS bill proof? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I'll Again, give me 24 hours and I'll find out for you. <laughs> I'll sample tonight. <laughs> and Frederick's asking, um, do they make uh, these games with a round base? 
because he's never yes. seen one. No, I have seen quite a few. So I don't a little bit of research in in formulating a, the a size of um, table skills to do for you, because all the ones I've played on have been massive. And in fact, I think about three years ago, I'd done an article in making one of these a big, a big full size one for Wood Turning Magazine. Um, but I didn't want to do that on on this uh, platform. I did think let's do a round one. Um, but I just pref- personally, I prefer the look of those square ones. They're more authentic looking to what I, what I associate to be a bar, uh, a bar game. But no, absolutely. I've seen quite a few round ones um, in, in, you know, in researching. So no problem at all. You, you just make, have to make sure that your round base is big enough to cope with the diamond of the, the um, skittles and to offset the, the pole as well. So you need to make it a, quite a lot bigger than the, your diamond. That's the only thing. But I would do exactly the same thing. Um, laminate your board rather than make it from a solid piece of timber because you'll always get movement if you do. Where are we? We're doing centre column next, aren't we? We've already got a hole there. We've got a 20 mil or three-quarter hole. So I've got an 18-inch piece of timber. I'm going to take nothing of it in terms of length. We're going to keep it nice and long. I'm using a small 16 mil Pro Drive. I need a little bit more room than you can get from a friction drive. So I've, I need a, a proper drive now. Um, this is a lovely straight grain piece of timber. Okay, so no issues with this one. I'm roughly centering. I have no dimension at all apart from the length on this one. Um, what you would have noticed, though, from the picture or from the, the one that I've previously done, let me just grab it a minute, is that we've got a little platform down the bottom. The reason that I've done that, okay, so let's get this here. The reason that I've done that, I just wanted as much surface area contact as possible because you're putting quite a lot of swing on this pole. And if we just went straight into that sort of three-quarter inch um, mortise and tenon, it wouldn't be as strong as to having that lovely little big base on there. So it's all done from the same bit of timber. You could, I suppose, do the column and then put a collar over the top to do the same sort of thing, spread the load. Um, That was a consideration, but uh, from 50 mil timber, two-inch timber, it works works i'll show you biggest bit of turning of course and the length of your column is up to you your pole is up to you however consider the chain that you've got to add to it i was guided by my plug chain it was 18 inch from start so i couldn't go that much bigger Nice bit of timber. This has got some lovely olive in it. Ash again. Lay speed to zero. Turn the lathe on. And we'll start with a rough and gouge. Get down to a cylinder. I can turn the lathe up in a moment once we've got a little bit of this diameter out. I'm going to turn the dust extraction on. You can't see it. I, I doubt whether you'll see it, but we're getting a lot of dust in here. This is dry timber. So dust extraction on to save mine and Ben's lungs. There we are. Now, before I take too much of this away, I want to keep this to maximum diameter. So let's measure again my drill bit that I use to drill the base. And I want to cut that tenon in straight away before I forget it. I'll use the depth gauge as well just to work out how 
deep I was with our drilling. And I, this time I'm just going to come a little bit short. So let's go this way. There we are. So that's the length of our tenon. I'll go with, again, the beading and parting tool. Let's turn the lathe up a bit. Just a very slight angle to the parting tool then just to get in there so it sits nice and snug down on the base okay let's uh well we can start shaping can't we we'll start off by taking a little bit of diameter away down the top here made is a very slight taper I've now eased off some of the pressure I'm just moving a little bit slower with a smaller cut just to leave a better finish and whilst I'm at this end I don't want I don't know whether you can see that let me just come out a little bit for you maybe turn you around a little bit there we go Whilst I'm at this end just here, what I don't want is that flat. I want a, a nice little shape. So let's go with a spindle. Let's go with a sharp spindle. Gouge. So we'll do a little OG. And look, what I'm going to do, I've got a, um, a ring center in here. It's getting in my way at the moment. I'm just going to swap that out for a a single point of tailstock center just so we can continue that right to that little point that little um the, the the hole that that center then leaves will be the position where i'm just going to put a little two mil hole with a drill bit down through the end and that then takes the screw that you're going to need to fasten on the the plug chain Sit. One more cut. There we go. Now, we'll carry on with the taper, but not forgetting we're going to do this little, again, another little OG down here. Right, that back up. Just keeping that taper going.
So I'm just using our, our different tools, mixing between the two, spindle gouge, bowl gouge. And when I still can't get in there with one of those, I can go to something like a nice skew chisel to give myself a little bit of definition right down in the bottom of those areas. So there we are, there's our spindle. So I think what we can do next is give that a bit of a sand up, sand down, whatever you want to call it, get rid of some tools. I'm going to start here um, with a, a hundred grit abrasive, okay? So a little bit coarser than we've had before. I'm not going to spend as much time on it as I normally would, but we know what we're doing. Whilst I'm doing this, just to let you in on a couple of other things that are happening this week. So we've got Jason on Thursday making a trivet. So this is a, so what you imagine a trivet to be, think again. Jason, as usual, has done something completely different and come up with another idea of a trivet. Um, so really interesting one for Thursday. And then just when you thought you'd had enough, he's back again on Tuesday with a button box and then to finish our lives we've got Ben on the 22nd so that's next Thursday making a selection of I'm going to say different vase shapes not turn these are very very different different than one you would have seen on us or us do before so yeah keep watching as many lives as we can do we are going to be doing some recorded videos for to keep you entertained between Christmas, between the mince pies and sherry. And then when we come back after Christmas, we're going to look at all those new starters to the to the crafts that we do. We're going to be having Steph on camera doing some turning. We're going to be doing some sharpening your new tools, all those sorts of things, those essentials that we need to to work with. Okay, so I'm down to 150 now. So then 240. Wherever my 240 is, there it is. And I'm running really low on oil here, but I'm going to get the oil on. And this is a little bit different. When you're doing a bigger, a bigger piece of timber like this with oil, we're going to sand it in. Sand it in really then helps seal the grain. So what we're doing is sanding wet oil is like wet sanding uh, with water. What you're doing is raising the grain, and as that grain raises, you then sand it off. It fills the grain, so it's it gives a lovely silky finish afterwards. So sand it in with fine abrasive. Don't turn the lathe on too quickly, otherwise you'll get a face full of oil. As it starts to dry, you can up the speed a little bit. Or more, not necessarily dry, but be absorbed. Sorry if you've heard me chuckling away here. There's been some really great um, suggestions on, on different versions of this. I bet there has. <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite is um, stacked up Rolos with <laughs> gobstoppers. <laughs> and then when mm -hmm. you finish, you can just scoff them all. <laughs> but lots of different versions of this out there, Colin, apparently. Excellent. Yeah. Is it? But I mean, you know, the size that we're making here is really easy just to get and play at the dinner table. You know, once you've finished 
especially when you're all come together on the holidays and around Christmas time. It's just you'd be surprised actually how competitive your family members can be. <laughs> right, so there we are. There's that one. We've got one more thing to make next, and that's the the ball. So we're going to crack on and do that. We'll answer a few questions first. Yes, Ben. Um, so a question here from Cliff. Uh, he's asking, if you were to make the pole park detachable for storage, um, what would be the best way of securing it? I'm glad you asked that because I've just gone to test fit it and it's a bit tight. <laughs> so I'm just going to make it a little bit slacker. Um, best way of securing it, I would have guessed maybe um, maybe a screw from the back. So um, countersink or um, do a, um, a countersunk hole and then a smaller hole to take the screw and maybe um, that, that could then screw it through the bottom. That's a, an idea. That will keep it all together. You could go really fancy and put um, uh, a female thread uh, in the bottom and um, of the base and then th screw things together, a male thread on the um, on the actual uh, the spindle itself. Give that a go. Um, there's all sorts of ways, I guess. Um but you're dead right. Storage is 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 the is the issue. Um, if you glue it together, not too much, not too much. I don't want it slopping around. Just try that before I walk away from it. That'll do. That's where we're going with that. We're not going to do any more. I'm sure that'll fit. I don't know what you guys are saying, but Ben's having a proper giggle to himself <laughs> over there. Ah, oh, that's better. I'm sorry. Martin's doing uh, Pante this year. <laughs> <laughs> no, he isn't. <laughs> <laughs> there. <laughs> Ben's gone. Sorry. Oh, there we are. We're in now. <laughs> if I'm honest, that needs does need a glue now. Um, but yeah, screw from the back if you wanted to dismantle it. There we go. Right, ball. We need the wrecking ball next. I've got another piece of that lovely ash. You all right for questions at the moment, Ben? Uh, I think so. Sorry, I'm I'm just giggling here. Um, Jenny Hard Jenny Harding got a question here, a serious question about um, having never played basketballs. Should the ball be a particular height above the board, or does it not matter too much? I was very scientific with mine, Jenny. When I finished making it, I literally cut the chain off where and, and, and fitted the ball. I, what I wanted was the the bottom of the board to just contact the um, the top of the very furthest skill. So I literally held the chain up, done that, and clipped it off where I needed to. Um, it's not rest. It's resting on the board as opposed to hanging from the the pole. So, um, that no, it is as scientific as 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 it was to me. There may be. I'm going to probably get shouted at now. Then probably in the the official uh, rule book of bar skills, there probably is. But um, the diameter of that one is about forty millimeters. Um, so yeah, scientific as it gets. Um, to make the ball, we're going to rough down to a cylinder. Hold it in the chuck and do our wrecking ball shape. There we go. Little whoa, dust. little um, dovetail. I'm going to use the O'Donnell George. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Dust. The O'Donnell jaws for a little dovetail.
O'Donnell one one twos. And the ball needs a hole for the um, for little eye um, to screw into. And I'm using the little hook eyes, the same eyes um, that I use on Christmas tree decorations. Um, and then you can hook that chain onto it. Um, the chains come with a, a little hook, especially that you just open up and then close when you got it fitted to the eye. So I will need to drill a little two mil hole in that. I'll just do it roughly for the minute, but um, let's get the shape going first. So I'm gonna keep the dust extractor on. And I'm going to make this shape with the bowl gouge, but you can do it again with a spindle gouge, scraper, skew, whatever you want. We've got that there for the minute. Now we can do the main curve. swap my tool rest over make it a little bit more a little bit easier to handle there we go <clears throat> So I'm going to go in with a, a, a spindle gouge next, but you could equally use um, a parting tool with a side scrape. This is what a side scrape is with a parting tool. So whether you can, yeah. Okay, so remember we said about that hole at the the top of the piece. Just dot the hole for the minute. There we are, that's centered up that, that little hole. And to be honest, it better drill on the lathe, but look, I've got my drill set up already. I've dotted center, nice and easy. Pop the hole up through there. And then your chain or your eye can go in there. Sand up to a finish. And when you sand it, that was just one grit. Once you've done the sanding, going to cut off but of course once you've cut that off you're going to go back to your sanding disc again and do the same thing we've done with the skittles so you get a really nice finish on the bottom of that wrecking ball okay now before we go any further just to prove to you now that that fits and we're going to get the other board back as well we did show you that one earlier. That fits in there nicely. We need all our other, other nine Skittles. So then eventually get back to our table, which we have there. See how the oil brings out the color in the end grain of that nice olive ash as well. Um, whilst we're talking, there's the little eye, okay, on our wrecking ball. And you can see how that fits with that chain from the, the plug chain. 
Okay, or the yeah, plug chain. Yes, Ben. A few questions? Yeah, so we've got a few questions here. One from Frederick. Um, with the weight of the ball, um, sorry, what wood would be best for the ball as the weight might make a difference? So traditionally, these pins and the ball was made out of uh, boxwood. Um, this is olive ash, and it works well. So that sort of density. If you start going to very um, light timbers, I would say things like... Um, sort of some of the lighter birches um and really really soft timbers then you're dead right if ever you've played full um skittles so in a skittle alley you'll understand that you need a heavy ball to push through uh the skittles and light balls just bounce off of the, the first one it hits so you do need a little bit of weight to it i've tr chosen to use the same weight or the same material that um that i've used for the skittle pins but it's a dense ash it works really well so yeah, traditionally it would have been boxwood, but anything nice and nice and hard and heavy. And then we've got loads more um, um, suggestions of maybe you could put a bell on there to so it rings as it swings around. That's an idea, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, a question here from Robert: um, Could you drill a hole in the end, in the end of the end? Sorry, could you drill a hole in the end of the board straight into the pole and then turn a handle with a peg on to hold the pole in place oh so coming in from the side that's a good idea yeah so the the tenon all the way through hole in from the side another peg in there job done isn't it that's a nice easy one yeah yeah that's a good one do that i was just thinking of maria then and and penguins and that could be a snowball i guess couldn't it instead of a, a wrecking ball so that's a, another idea um how are we doing for questions ben is that it I think we're good. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. Guys, thank you ever so much for, for indulging me and having the patience of putting up for me ranting and raving for that last the last hour. That's my last live before Christmas. Um, so um, we're gonna do some recorders for you there. So obviously it's not our live, our last live. Ben and Jason are still gonna be doing some, but I'll see you again uh, live after Christmas, of course. Um, have a wonderful holiday, a wonderful holidays, a wonderful Christmas time. Um, overindulge as much as you can. Um, drink and eat far too much and um, I'll see you afterwards. Don't forget if you like what you've seen um, give us a thumbs up, share us around and uh, yeah, and, and just keep talking about us. We really do appreciate it so thank you very much. Yeah, and see you again. Bye bye.